All right, guys. So we have a pretty easy lecture today. So this is going to be on the six trig ratios. Um, so what these are about are, um, well, the definitions of trigonometry, okay? So there's really two types of trigonometry that we talk about in this class. So there's what they call right angle trigonometry and, um, and then unit circle trigonometry. So we're gonna be doing unit circle trigonometry after we're done with right angle trigonometry. So two types, I'm gonna write that down. Uh, two types of trig that we cover. Number one, unit circle trigonometry. Which is basically uh, trig functions as functions. What's that mean? I mean like y equals sine x or something like that. Okay? Um, and then you can make graphs. So like if you look at sine wave. Yeah, that's what that looks like. <laughs> then um, then that's what we're talking about when we talk about unit circle trigonometry. Um, although it takes a while to get from unit circles to that kind of graph. Um, the other type of trigonometry that we cover though is right angle or right triangle trigonometry, I should say. Right triangle. trigonometry, uh, which is what it sounds like, it has to do with right triangles. And that's the kind that we're talking about today. Okay, um, so in order to get into that, we want to talk a little bit about right triangles, which we did talk about previously, but here's what we need to know. Uh, so triangles. So number one, a right triangle has a one 90 degree angle, right? So there's a right triangle, okay? Um, and of course they mark the right angle with a square kind of um, marker there. Okay, so that's a right triangle and we've talked about it a little bit. Okay, now the other angles add up to 90 degrees as well because the total is 180. But we don't really care about that at the moment. Okay, so a right angle, right triangle has 190 degree angle. Okay, now if you label one of the angles as theta, so label one angle with theta. So that's the Greek letter theta. It's just a name for the angle. You could call it A or B or alpha or beta, whatever you wanted to call it. But uh, theta is used so often that you should just get used to calling your angles theta. Okay, so label one angle with theta in a right triangle. I don't know what happened there. Should have been straight up. Wasn't. Close enough. If I do that, it's still a right triangle because I say so. All right, so label one angle with theta. So I could call this one theta, or if I wanted, I could call this one theta. It doesn't matter which, you just have to call one of them theta. One of the ones that's not 90 degrees, okay? Now, when you do that, when you label one of the angles as theta, then that's going to determine three sides of the triangle. So there are three sides. Uh, one of them, the longest side of the triangle, is called the hypotenuse. Now you probably know that. I mean, you should, right? Because we talked about it before. But it's called the hypotenuse. So that's this side. 
right? And so HYP, I'll use that as the abbreviation for hypotenuse most of the time. Uh, so does the homework. So, you know, that is what it is. So that's the first side. Now, the longest side is always the hypotenuse, but there's two other sides. Now, which one is which in terms of names depends on where the theta is. So the other side, so not the hypotenuse, that is next to the theta is called the adjacent side. Now adjacent just is another word that means next to, right? So adjacent just means next to. So if the theta is right here, then which side is the adjacent side? Well, it's this one, right? Two of the sides are next to the theta. One of them's the hypotenuse, the other one's the adjacent side. Now the third side, can fit it here. So the third side is on the opposite side from the theta, right? So if the theta is right here, then over here is the furthest away, right? It's opposite of the angle theta. So that's what we call it is opposite. So the side opposite of theta is called opposite. I mean, not really a brain teaser, is it? Right, so hypotenuse adjacent and opposite. And you need to know them. All right, so those are the three sides. Um, hypotenuse adjacent and opposite. Now, why do you need to know those three sides? The reason you need to know those three sides is because the definitions of the six trigonomic functions, uh, or ratios we're gonna call them in this uh, section, depends on them, right? So you need to know which side is which. And it does depend on where you put the theta, right? If I draw a new triangle here, like if I just pick a different color here and I'll draw a new triangle like that, and if I put my theta up here, then now all the sides are in a different place. The long side is still the hypotenuse. That does not change. But the side that's next to the theta now is over here. So that's the adjacent side. And the side that's opposite of the theta is now down here, right? So which side is adjacent and which side is opposite depends on where you draw the theta. So you have to know what, what angle you're, or yeah, what angle is the theta that you're talking about, okay? So that's why we covered that first. Now, once you know the sides of the triangle there, then we can actually define our six trigono trigonometric functions, okay? So now here they are, definitions. There are six trigonometric functions defined for theta. Okay, here they are. So they have long names and then basically short names. So the long names are like this. So the sine of theta, right? That's the long way to say it. The short name, the name with symbols, is sine theta like that, 
okay? And then the way you calculate it is simply from two sides of the triangle. So if you have a triangle like these, then the way you calculate the sign is it's the opposite side over the hypotenuse, okay? And that's it, that's the definition of the sine of theta. Well, like I said, there's six of these, so we've got only one written down, we have to write the other five. So the cosine of theta, written that way, it comes from two sides of the triangle. Oh, I hate it when it does that. adjacent over hypotenuse, then we have the tangent of theta, tan theta like that. It's the opposite side over the adjacent side. And then we have um, three more, which are basically just the first three, but they're upside down now upside down, what that mean? Means this. So like if I do the uh, secant, that's an A of theta, secant theta like that, it's an upside down cosine. So it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent, okay? But it is an upside down cosine, so if you've already calculated the cosine, you could also calculate it that way. All right, two more. We have the cosecant of theta, which is CSC theta. That one's an upside down sine. So it's a hypotenuse over the opposite side, or one over the sine. And lastly, we have the cotangent of theta, which is COT theta. So that's an upside down tangent. So it's an adjacent over an opposite, which is one over the tangent, like that. Okay, so you have six formulas there. And basically, the entire assignment that you have to do for the six trigonometric ratios, which sounds like a, a tough thing to do, is actually just, just using those formulas. So they give you the triangle, and then you calculate what it asks for. So like, literally, I just opened the homework, here is the first question it asks me. Example. Give me a triangle. Now, I'm not drawing this to scale, so like the numbers aren't going to look like the numbers here. So they give me this triangle, and it says calculate. secant theta, that's it, calculate secant theta. So what you do is you just say, well, secant theta is what? It's sides of the triangle. So you look up at the formula. The formula says it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So I know it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent but you need to know which side is which. And that's why you have to understand the triangle. So which side is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is the long side. So this is the hypotenuse, right? And then you have to know which side is the adjacent side. Well, the adjacent side is the one that's next to the theta, but is not the hypotenuse. So this is the adjacent side. 
So what do you do with that? Well, you just fill in the numbers, right? So the hypotenuse is five, because they said so, and the adjacent side is four, because they said so. So there you go. The secant is five over four. Now in the homework, it says to enter your answer as a ratio of sides. So this is actually how you wanna write it, just like that. But it is just a number, five over four, so technically, like 1.25 is correct as well, but they want five over four because they specifically asked for it as a ratio, which means write it as a fraction. Okay. So again, you're just gonna be doing this a bunch of times in a row, it looks like. So here's another one. Why you no make it straight? Ignore the little bit. All right, theta, 21, 20, 29. There's another triangle. They say find cotangent theta. Um, also notice that I didn't put parentheses around the theta. Um, they don't always. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I did not this time. Uh, you could. It's a cotangent theta. So what's a cotangent? So you just look at your formulas. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So you just write it down. Adjacent opposite. So adjacent side, where is it? Next to the theta but it's not the hypotenuse. That's the adjacent side. Okay, what about opposite? Opposite is supposed to be opposite of the theta. So based on where the theta is, that must be the opposite side. So then you fill them in. 21, 20. Okay. So it's literally that easy. So they will move around. They'll start to give you triangles that are kind of oriented in space in a weird way. Like there's one like this. And they want the cosine. So again, just like always, you, so there's your theta, you look up the formula for cosine, you find out that is adjacent hypotenuse. Adjacent next to the theta, not the hypotenuse. So with the theta in the right hand corner there, this must be adjacent, right? It's not the 13 because the 13 is the long side so it's the hypotenuse, which I guess that's the next thing we need to know, right? So the hypotenuse is the longest side. There it is. So once you know those, you fill them in. 5, 13. And you're done. Okay. Now um, I'm going to click through a few more of these. But... Um, I think really you're just doing the same thing over and over and over. Um, it's not long. I mean, you can do it pretty quickly here. Probably do the homework in 20 minutes. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Um, okay. All right. I literally cannot find a different question. It's just, it's just these over and over. All right. Good, 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 good. Um, so that's that's it then. That's that's the entire um, homework assignment is just those. So um, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to start a new video in a second, which is going to be why we care about these. What are you going to do with them? Okay. Just as a preview though, for the next lecture, here's what we're going to do. Use these 
to find uh, things like this. Things like, if I gave you an ugly triangle like that, right? Like if I told you that this right here was like 40 degrees, and I told you here that this is like 20, and I put like an X here, I say find X. I don't know why I put a question mark on it. That's not a question, but find X. Could you do it? Of course, the answer is yes, but um, in order to do it, you are gonna need a calculator. But luckily for us, we have calculators, so we can do it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do in the next lecture. Applications of right angle trigonometry, basically. Okay, so that's it. See you in a minute.